welcome back to day six of the 12 days of macrame Christmas. Hi everyone, welcome back to Bochina Macrame. My name is Nicole. And in today's tutorial, on the sixth day of the 12 days of macrame Christmas, we will be going over a macrame Christmas tree. These macrame Christmas trees are perfect as wall hangings or as Christmas ornaments. So for this Christmas tree, I combined a variety of different items. I incorporated a different color cord to resemble a garland. So you'll see that little fluff that I added on the Christmas tree. That's a knotting technique that I've made using double half inch knots. I've also incorporated beads as well as berry knots to resemble ornaments for the tree. And because we're on day six of the 12 days of macrame Christmas, that means we're halfway through the series already. So if you guys haven't already, click subscribe to Bochi Not Macrame's YouTube channel so that you can stay tuned for the remainder of the 12 days of macrame Christmas. We will be hosting a live workshop this week for one of the 12 days of macrame Christmas. For more details on that, check out the description below. If you guys enjoyed this pattern, let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And with that, let's begin! Before we begin, you will need some materials and supplies. I've used 3mm cotton cord for this pattern. You will also need a small ring, and I used a small wooden ring for this, and some large hole beads. The cord that I will be using today for the tree is a natural single strand cotton cord from my foundation cord line and this is a super super soft premium quality cord. It is definitely my favorite cord to knot with because of how soft it is and it doesn't fray too easily making it very sturdy and easy to work with. you are a beginner, I would definitely recommend starting off with the foundation cord first and working and knotting with that. It is super soft on the hands and really easy to work with. You will also need a few strands of colored cord as well or just a cord that's different than the main color that you will be using for the tree and that's for the fluff that we will be adding as a part of the garland for the tree. If you want to keep it the same color as the tree itself, that's totally okay. I will be adding this coral rose color as the garland for my tree. You will also need a small ring, either a wooden ring or a metal ring, and you will also need some large hole beads. I will be using these faux pink pearl beads that have 5mm holes. To start this pattern, we're going to take a strand of cord at 160 centimeters long. We're going to fold it in half and attach it onto the ring at the bottom using a lark's head knot. Then we're going to separate these vertical cords and we're going to attach two more cords onto the right side and two more cords onto the left side using lark's head knots. So taking another strand of 160 centimeter long cord, fold it in half and attach it onto the right cord using a lark's head knot. Repeat once more to the right and then repeat on the left side for two Lars head knots mirroring what we just did on the right side. Once all four Lars head knots are attached, we're going to start with the middle four cords and make a square knot. Then with the two adjacent cords to the left and the left two cords underneath the square knot we just made, make an alternating square knot. Then repeat on the right side mirroring what we just did on the left.
With the second chord from the right, we're going to make a vertical lark's head knot onto the far right chord. Then repeat the same thing on the left side, mirroring what we just did on the right. We're going to make our first berry knot with the middle four chords. To make a berry knot, make three consecutive square knots, then take the middle two chords and weave it above the first square knot, pull it back from behind, and then finish off with another square knot using the same working chords. Take your first large hole bead and weave it through the far left cord. If you have a hard time threading your cord through your beads, tape the ends of your cords before threading them through and that should help making it easier to thread the beads through. Then taking the third cord from the left as an anchor cord, make two double half hitch knots to the left. So starting with the second chord from the left as the first working chord, make a double half inch knot, then take the far left chord as the next working chord for a double half inch knot. Now we're going to repeat on the right side, mirroring what we just did on the left. Then taking the inner left four chords, so skipping the far right chord, we're going to make a square knot. Then make another square knot adjacent to this to the right. Take a strand of cord at 120 centimeters long and attach it onto the far left cord with a reverse lark set knot. So opposite to what we did in the very beginning, we're going to take the loop from under and above. Then repeat the same thing with the second 120 centimeter cord on the right side. We're going to start our first fluffing technique. So we're going to take a strand of cord and you can use a separate color if you'd like. Taking a strand of cord at about 90 centimeters long, we're going to start with a vertical double half inch knot. So holding on to one end, take the long end and make a vertical double half inch knot. Onto the second 
vertical cord from the left. Once the double half inch knot has been made, slide it up to meet the top. We're going to repeat this pattern again, but instead of holding on to that shorter cord end, we're going to hold on to a small little loop and then make the vertical double half inch knot again. So ensuring that the vertical double half inch knot is not tightly made next to the one that we just made, we're going to leave a loop in between them. Repeat for another vertical double half inch knot onto the next cord, also leaving another loop. Keep continuing with this pattern with all of the vertical cords to the right, stopping after the second cord from the right. Once all of the loops and vertical cloofage knots have been made, we're going to cut the center of all the loops. This will form the fringe fluff pattern that we will need. Continue until all the loops are cut. Skipping the left three cords, take the next four cords after that, and we're going to make another berry knot. We're also going to make another berry knot adjacent to this one on the right. You're wanting to leave a little bit of room above the first square knot so that you're able to pull the cords through. So leave about a half a centimeter of space between the fringe and the first square knot. Similar to what we did above, we're going to take the third cord from the right as an anchor cord and make a double half inch knot with the second cord from the right. Then we're going to weave a bead through that far right cord before finishing off that second double half inch knot. Thank you. 
Then we're going to repeat this pattern on the left side. Once it's done on the left side as well, we're going to take a strand of cord at 80 centimeters now, fold it in half, and attach it onto the far left cord using a reverse lax head knot. Repeat on the right side as well. With the left two cords underneath the left berry knot and then the two cords next to it on the left, we're going to make an alternating square knot. Then we're going to make two more adjacent square knots to the right. Now we're going to take a strand of cord, so I'm going to work with my coral rose cord again at 120 centimeters long this time, a little longer, and starting from the second cord from the left, we're going to make a row of vertical double half inch knots again with loops in between each of the vertical double half inch knots. Skipping the first three cords on the left, we're now going to make three consecutive berry knots starting with the first four cords after that. Once you've made the berry knot with these four cords here, make two more adjacent to this to the right. I have positioned where the berry knots should be. All you have to do is finish them off. Similar to the last two times that we have attached a bead, we're going to thread through a bead through the far left and far right cords, and starting with the third cord from the left, we're going to make two double half inch knots to the left. Then repeat the same thing on the right side. Lastly, we're going to take our strand of cord at 50 centimeters long and make a reverse lox head knot onto the far left cord and then onto the far right cord as well. Then 
Then in between each of these berry knots, we're going to make a square knot. We're going to make a total of four square knots. So we have one square knot on the left, then one square knot in between the left two berry knots, and then two more to the right. Taking that last strand of cord in a separate color at 160 centimeters long, we're going to repeat that fluff pattern technique with vertical double half inch knots and loops in between them. Now we're going to start to seal off the bottom of the tree. Using the far left cord as an anchor cord, take the next cord to it on the right and make a double half inch knot. Then continue to the right, stopping after the middle left cord. Then repeat on the right side, mirroring what we just did on the left. Make a double half inch knot with the middle two cords. Then continue to the left for one more double half inch knot. Then with the middle right cord as the anchor cord, make a double half inch knot with a cord next to it on the right. Add one more double half inch knot on both sides.
We're going to close off this diamond pattern with double half inch knots as well, but this time the double half inch knots are facing the other way. Lastly, close off the middle with one more double half inch knot. Last but not least, trim the fringe at the bottom and comb through them to your desired length. You will also want to trim the fringe that we added as the garland of the tree as there are going to be some core as there are going to be some fibers that are going to be longer than the others so trim the pink part as well to make sure that they are even. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.